Hey developers, today we're gonna look at eight JavaScript object and array functions that you should know. Now these array and object functions are the best, I would say, that you should know in JavaScript. They're some of the most used, and if you don't use these, you should really look at them. They'll make your development work in JavaScript much faster, much cleaner, and uh, I just really like them. So I wanna talk about them, and then we're gonna go into a quick demo, and we'll, we'll show a few. So number one in my list here is filter. So you guys may have heard this. Uh, there's three, filter, map, and reduce are so, sort of the, the three most popular ones that I'm gonna talk about today. So here's an example. So let's say we have const words, we have spray, limit, elite, exuberant, destruction, present, happy, but we want to filter it. So we can actually, uh, what the filter, what this does, what dot filter does is it looks for a true, oops, it looks for a true or false value. So what this is saying is it's filter. We're using a little ES6 arrow, fat arrow function. And it's saying if the word dot length is greater than six, so if this is truth, truthy or true, then it'll keep the word. If it's false, then it will filter it out. So what it does is it iterates through this array Every word is checked. If it comes true, it is returned. If it's false, then it's taken out. So this long words would have every word that's greater than six in it. And I'll show you some more examples of that. So you can see this is a lot easier than trying to do a for loop and then checking each one. So that is filter. Next one is dot map. So in dot map, we can do this. So let's say we have numbers, one, four, nine. Uh, we do numbers dot map, math dot square root. And what map does is instead of like filtering something out where we're taking out things, we're actually going through every single value and then we're doing something to it. So we're changing the value somehow. So we're either returning the same value back or we're changing it. So we're not adding or deleting anything out of the array, we're actually updating it. In this case, we're running this math.square root on it. So 149 root is uh, 1, 2, and 3. But just to remember that this, when you use filter map or reduce, these array map functions, these uh, array functions, that you actually aren't changing the values inside the array. So you're not and this is kind of goes back to functional programming and mutations. We never want to take an array and actually change it. We're always returning a new array. So make sure to remember that. So inside numbers here, numbers is always gonna be one, four, and nine. We're gonna return a new array for roots, which is one, two, and three. And that's the same thing for filter as well. We're not changing the const words. We're just returning a new array. So keep that in mind. And the last one, I wanna to talk to these three major ones is reduce. And reduce can do a lot of cool stuff. So here's an array, zero, one, two, three. Reduce, we have a function, and then we have an accumulator, a current value, a current index, and an array. And so what we can do with it is we're basically building like a brand new object or array or something. So reduce can take like this whole array, and in this case, we're taking an accumulator, and that's, that's basically, where it starts off with, the accumulator, and then we're adding it to current value. So what this would do is add each one of these together and we return one number. But we can certainly, uh, you can see down here um, with my mouse, that you can actually set an initial value. So you can have this be an object, you can have it set an initial value of 100. So you can do a lot of cool things. So this usually reduces down to one thing, either an object, an array, or just a number, so you're reducing it down to one. And once again, of course, we're not changing things inside the array that was passed to it. We're always returning a new array or object. And like I said, you get the accumulator, and that's every time this runs on each value, you, your accumulator gets updated. You have the current value, that's where inside each one of the array that you're at. The index, so zero, one, two, three, four. And then array, that's the original array that you passed in. So that really makes it easy to do some really complicated things. And there's a lot of good use cases when you start running reduce. Dot for each. So if dot for each is sort of a, a better loop 
I mean, it's just another way to loop through things. You can see here we have const items, item one, item two, item three. Items for each function item, you can push it on there. So it just goes through each one of these. I don't think at this point you'll ever need to use like a for loop in JavaScript with things like this, because uh, for each will take care of it. Uh, dot sum is also really easy to use. So you can see here, there's, uh, there's also dot every, which is sort of the other one uh, function. So you can do function is bigger than 10. So what this does is it, if you pass in um, element greater than 10, it says true or false there. So what this does is say, it says uh, you pass in 25814. So if any one of these values is greater than 10, then it would return false. Um, on the other hand, so what this saying is, is any of these bigger than 10? So all these are less than 10, so it returns false. On the other hand, one of the first one is bigger than 10, so it returns true. So only one value has to pass for it to be true. And since none of these values are bigger than 10, it's false, but one of these values is, so it's true. Now there's dot every, which maybe I'll look, we'll look at too, which you have to have every value be true for it to pass. Otherwise it's false. And then there's three I'm just gonna combine here, object.values, object.keys, and object.entries. So this makes it really easy to grab values out of a, a, an object. So like we have an object here, the keys are 0, 1, 2. We can use object.keys and we can get back 0, 1, 2. Our next example, we have foo bar baz42. You want to get the values, so it returns back the values, which is bar and 42 in an array, by the way. And the last one is we can do entries, and that returns the key and value in an array. So you can see foo bar baz42. So those, these eight are just really awesome JavaScript functions um, that you should know about. So let's jump into a pen here, and I can show you a little bit. So let's say here, let's take my array. Let's do const ants, and we'll do my array. I'll make this a little bit bigger. And we can see here we have an array of numbers. So we could filter them out. So let's say we want only numbers bigger than 24. So we can do myarray.filter. And then we're going to do ES6 here with our function. And we're going to say return, or we don't even, we can do return, or we can just do it L is, let's say, greater than or equal to 24. And then we'll do console log ants two. So we'll just make sure we have a return there. There we go. So you can see here 24, 33, 45, and 24. So that's it. If we took out here and we saved it, you can see it now it's working. It's because we had the brackets. So that's a way that we can do filter. Um, let's take a look at map. So let's say we have this, this array here and we want to add 10 to each one of them. So that's pretty easy. So uh, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to comment that out. And we'll do const ants my array dot map l and we'll do We'll turn L plus 10, and we'll console log ants. We'll clear it. Console log ants. You can see here, now we got 34, 12, 355, 34, 10. So you can see here the original array. Now everything's added by 10. We could also, obviously, if we wanted to, we could combine these two. So I can map this out, and then I could say filter F let's say f greater than uh, 12. Now you can see only the ones that are bigger than 12. So it eliminates the 12 out there. Uh, okay, I went ahead and created a, just a brand new array here. And let's try a reduce on it. So I'm gonna create a const answer. And I'm gonna take my array. I'm going to try a reduce. And I'm gonna have my accumulator and my value and 
then I'm going to redo, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the accumulator and add to the value. And now I'm going to console log answer. You can see here there's 206. So all it did is I took ACC, I took the value, I added them all together, and it came up with the answer 206. Now I could have do something like this, a little bit more complicated. So if I wanted to, I can put this around parentheses. And if I do return, I can still get my 206 answer as we expect. But what happens if I wanted to start with a different initial value? So I put 100 in here. So now I get 306, which is kind of cool. All right, guys. Well, I hope you guys liked that quick tour of HJavaScript objects and array functions. If you like these type of videos, please click that subscribe button. Also, make sure you like the video and leave a comment below. What arrays do you guys like? Thanks.